Okay, this video is going to be about log differentiation. Um, and the first thing I want to point out is that this is actually not a video about finding the derivative of uh, the log of f of x in base b. Um, but if you were here to figure out how to do that, uh, you just use the change base formula. So you're actually going to be finding the derivative of the natural log of f of x over the natural log of b. Um, so that's change base formula. Uh, it's kind of neat because you just change all the logs to natural logs. And, uh, you know, whatever was kind of on top stays on top, and on the bottom stays on the bottom. Anyway, uh, from there, if you were going to do this, you can factor out the 1 over natural log of b, because that's just a number. Uh, so it's really 1 over natural log of b times the derivative of natural log of f of x. And then, uh, hopefully, you know that derivative by now. So, not a video about this, but that's how you would do it, if that's what you're here for. Um, what this actually is a video about is finding the derivative of something that looks like this. So we have uh, the derivative of x to the x. So there's uh, an issue here. So let's take a look at the issue. Uh, if you look at the exponent, the exponent is not a constant. And since it's not a constant, it means that the power rule doesn't apply. Um, and then the base itself is not a constant. And since that's the case, um, we're not going to be doing the derivative of something like a to the u, where that would be uh, a to the u times the natural log of a times du dx by the chain rule. Um, so what we do instead is we kind of rewrite this problem, and we say let y equal x to the x. And it's called log differentiation because I'm going to take the log of both sides. So by log, I mean natural log. So I want dy dx. Um, so here we go. Natural log of y equals natural log of x to the x. Now, when you do this, you can pretty much always use the properties of logs on the, uh, the function part. So it's going to be x natural log of x. So uh, exponents become coefficients. And now I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So 1 over y dy dx um, by the chain rule on that side and implicit differentiation. And then on the other side, I'm going to have to use product rule. First, derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. I'm going to clean that up a little bit. So we end up with 1 plus the natural log of x. And uh, from there, what I'm going to do is I want to get dy dx by itself, so I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So dy dx is 1 plus the natural log of x, and then times y. But um, the issue is the original problem didn't have y in it. We kind of introduced the y. So what I will notice is that y is actually equal to x to the x. So I'll just rewrite this, replacing that y with x to the x. And there you go. That's how you find that derivative. Uh, I'm going to do one more. And uh, these kind of, they frequently get messy because, uh, I mean, why would they not? Look at these functions. Um, so I'm going to have dy dx equal uh, 4, y equals the quantity 3x squared plus 5 to the 1 over x. Um, so pretty gross. Uh, we basically use this technique when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, uh, not an exponent, a uh, variable raised to a variable. Um, so let's see. Take natural log of both sides. So I get that monster. Use the properties of natural log. So the uh, 1 over x that's currently the exponent is going to become a coefficient, but multiplying by 1 over x is the same as dividing by x. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Okay, now I'm just going to take the derivative of both sides and start to really regret this example. So it's bottom through to the top, uh, minus top, and the derivative of the bottom is 1, all over the bottom squared. So we get that. Uh, I don't know how much I want to simplify this, so let's say dy dx is just y times, bring the 1 over x squared out, and then make it 6x squared by distributing that x. Uh, I don't know, I'm going to leave it like that because it's a lot of writing. Uh, so I probably don't want a y in my final answer, so to get rid of this y, I look up at the top at the original definition, and I would just rewrite it using that instead of y. Um, so I'm going to leave this as my final answer because I think you probably got the point. Uh, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.